Throughout the first month of the MLB season, we've seen hot dogs on the field, players dancing on the field, fans on the field, players fighting fans off the field, and much, much more. Some of the poorest teams in baseball are the best teams in baseball, while some of the richest teams in baseball are in complete shambles. We've seen players' careers seemingly come to an end. We've seen a team that is so bad, their entire franchise is coming to an end, and we've seen new rules that have confused players, coaches, and fans, and have changed the game forever. But the strangest thing to happen in 2023 might have come in the first week of the season. For the first time in over 50 years, all 30 teams played on opening day, and the impact of the new rules were seen immediately. Pitchers are now only allowed to attempt a pickoff three times per plate appearance. If the third attempt fails, that runner advances. MLB hoped this would increase steals, and the very first base runner of 2023 happened to be one of the fastest. After two failed pickoffs, Ronald Acuna Jr. stole second easily, and this trend kept going. There were 21 steals on opening day, more than any opening day in over 100 years. At the end of April, steals were up an insane 54%. Runs are up this year, hits are up this year because of the shift restrictions, and the average length of game is down 27 minutes due to the pitch clock. And with MLB reporting rises in attendance and viewership so far in 2023, the new rule changes have been deemed by MLB an overwhelming success. But the most notable things that happened on opening day had nothing to do with the games. The first game in Los Angeles saw a fan run onto the field and began proposing to his girlfriend. According to her, she says she barely saw it because she went to the bathroom and was walking back to her seat when she saw this. The man got decked, and according to him, he did it because, quote, you should always show your wives you love them. Always fight, treat them with love, and do everything for them. And this is how he showed it. His fiance loved it, and she said yes. The man wasn't even arrested, and now they have a GoFundMe for the wedding. This guy wasn't as lucky. This happened during the opening series versus the Angels and Athletics, arguably two of the most disappointing teams in MLB over the past two seasons. The Angels legitimately have two of the greatest players of all time in Mike Trout and Shohei Otani, yet haven't made the playoffs since 2014. Year after year, the team disappoints, and with Otani becoming a free agent at the end of this year, this is most likely their last chance to be competitive. If not, Otani is unquestionably going somewhere else. Luckily, they started the season against the A's, undoubtedly the worst team in baseball, and things couldn't have gone any worse. They lost. And after the game, Anthony Rendon grabbed a fan by the collar, lunged at him, and was suspended four games. Since then, these teams have gone in opposite directions. Otani is on pace to have a season that is somehow even better than the last two. Mike Trout is healthy and going off again, and their starting pitching seems to be stronger than it has in past years. As of now, they are comfortably in the playoffs. The A's, on the other hand, are so bad, they legitimately won't even be a team anymore. After shedding payroll and trading all their good players, news broke that they have agreed to buy land in Las Vegas, almost guaranteeing that they will be moving. Since then, A's fans have revolted. Against Seattle, they recorded an attendance that was lower than 11 out of 13 AAA games played that day. The fans who have shown up have gone to protest, chanting sell the team throughout the game. The A's are offering a deal that gets you a ticket for 37 games for only $99. That's less than $3 a game. The Blue Jays and Phillies have tried a different strategy to get fans into the stadium, and it ended with hundreds of hot dogs being thrown on the field. They both brought back Dollar Dog Night in 2023 and were both complete chaos and a massive success. The Blue Jays had Joey Chestnut throw out the first pitch, which inspired fans to eat an insane 51,000 hot dogs, approximately 1.7 hot dogs per fan. That broke a Blue Jays record, but is nothing compared to what happened in Philly. They have a rich history of Dollar Dog Night. The notorious incident of the teenage fan running on the field and getting tased? That was on Dollar Dog Night. A fan was arrested and sentenced to prison for throwing up on an 11-year-old. 
on Dollar Dog Night. And last year, a man even claimed Dollar Dog Night saved his life after setting his own record by eating eight dogs. The next day, he woke up with a massive stomach ache. After the pain didn't go away, he went to the doctor and found out he had cancer. He started treatment right away, and since they caught it early enough, less than a year later, he is cancer-free because Dollar Dog Night made him go to the hospital. But this year, Dog Night went to another level. The Phillies had their first one on April 11th. They had an attendance of over 43,000 people. The stadium only holds 42,000 people. The lines for hot dogs were extremely long, and they ate an insane 74 plus thousand hot dogs. Towards the end of the game, a fan stood up and told everyone he was going for his hot dog record, but ran out of hot dogs, so fans responded by throwing hot dogs at him. Then the entire stadium started throwing hot dogs. This was chaos, but the Phillies still scheduled two more dollar dog nights. The second one sold out again and beat the previous record, selling over 80,000 hot dogs, and once again ended with dogs being thrown on the field. And the third dollar dog night was even crazier. They broke the dollar dog night attendance record with 44 plus thousand people, broke the hot dog eating record with 88 plus thousand hot dogs, and invented the first ever dollar dog wave, where the entire stadium did the wave while throwing their hot dogs in the air. Dollar Dog Night was a success, but the start of the Philly season wasn't. They started the year losing their first baseman for the season, and with Bryce Harper expected to miss most of the season with Tommy John, there was reason to be worried. They got off to an extremely slow start, falling into fourth place while having one of the highest payrolls in the league. Luckily for them, turns out Bryce Harper is not human. He pulled off one of the most miraculous recoveries in baseball history, which he's done his whole career. His rookie year, he got pissed at himself, slammed his bat, and hurt his eye. He was bleeding from his face, had to get 11 stitches, and stayed in the game. In 2013, he ran full speed into a wall. Despite trying to stay in the game, the Nats made him come out. He played two days later. In 2017, he strained his calf on this play. Players are expected to miss nine weeks with this injury. Harper came back in six, and in 2021, he got hit in the face with a 97 mile per hour fastball. He played four days later. In 2022, he tore his UCL and needed Tommy John surgery. He continued to play with the hurt elbow, went off, and led the Phillies to the World Series. He got Tommy John after the season ended, and the Phillies announced he would miss at least half the year. But it's May 15th, and Bryce Harper is playing. The average position player misses 11 months with Tommy John surgery. Bryce Harper missed five months the fastest recovery for Tommy John in MLB history. In fact, Bryce Harper healed from Tommy John faster than athletic starters could win a game. Yes, in the five-month span it took Bryce Harper to heal, athletic starters set an MLB record by not winning a game in their first 33 games. The A's are in last place in war, FIP, ERA, whip, run differential, strikeouts, opponent batting average, gave up more runs than anyone, gave up more home runs than anyone, gave up more hits than anyone, walked the most batters, and have hit more batters than anyone else. Unsurprisingly, they also have the most losses in baseball. Their broadcaster, Glenn Kuyper, is indefinitely suspended after he mispronounced a word and accidentally said a racial slur live on the air. The Mets broadcast had to switch boos when they were in Oakland because there's a possum that literally lives in the booth and has for years because that's how much their stadium is falling apart. Over the past few years, there have been multiple possums on the field, seagulls on the field, a stadium worker reportedly found dead mice in the soda machine, and there are reportedly over 100 feral cats living on the property. The Mets broadcast was planning to do the broadcast with the possum in the booth like every other team does, but refused because it pooped and it smelled that bad. They moved to a new booth where there was a massive pole blocking the view of the game. As embarrassing as this was for the A's, the actual game was worse. Their pitchers walked 17 batters 
in a nine inning game, the most walks given up in a nine inning game since 1948. Unsurprisingly, the A's are dead last in payroll. What is more surprising is that the three other poorest teams in the league happen to be three of the best so far. One of these teams is the Pittsburgh Pirates. And after this happened, it seemed like they were going to suck again. In the second week of the season, their star shortstop O'Neill Cruz had an awkward slide and got injured. The White Sox catcher screamed at him while he was on the ground. The benches cleared while O'Neill Cruz was on the ground, raving in pain. He'll miss most of the season, but somehow the Pirates kept winning, despite being projected to have the third worst record in the league, had the third worst record in the league last year, and their only offseason signing was Andrew McCutcheon, who's way past his prime. At the time of this recording, they're still in first place. That may not last, but two of the other poorest teams in baseball seem legit. The Orioles have sucked for years and are finally good again. They would be in first if it wasn't for the Rays, who despite having the third lowest payroll in baseball, tied an MLB record by going undefeated in their first 13 games. At the end of April, they led the league in at least 20 categories. The Yankees are paying Aaron Judge and Garrett Cole only $2 million less than the entire Rays roster combined. The Mets are paying two pitchers a combined $86 million a season. The Rays are paying their entire pitching staff, which is 14 pitchers, 22 million. Their entire pitching staff is about four times cheaper than Max Scherzer and Justin Verlander, yet somehow they have been by far the best pitching staff in the league so far. These three teams have a combined payroll of 215 million. That's less than five individual teams. Out of those five teams, only one of them leads their division right now. While some of their richest teams are having beefs inside the clubhouse, coaches calling out players publicly, players getting suspended for cheating, baseball's poorest teams are hitting bombs and doing beer bong celebrations in the dugout after each one. This is one of many dugout celebrations, a trend that has exploded in 2023. But one of them was so crazy, MLB actually banned it. But before we get to that, a quick word from today's sponsor. Everybody wants to hit a home run, but you can't when your untrimmed bush is starting to look like Wrigley Field. So get your game on point with Manscaped, the grooming care products that are taking over the world right now. Eight million people already trust Manscaped, and you can too just by using the code BDE20OFF, which gets you 20% off and free shipping from manscaped.com. You can get the legendary performance package 4.0, which includes the lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, which is insanely quick, extremely safe, and basically the Mike Trout of trimmers. The Weed Whacker for your nose and ears, which includes skin safe technology, preventing nicks, snags, and tugs in those delicate holes. And don't forget the Crop Preserver, the anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer, as well as the Crop Reviver, which is spray-on toner for your balls. You didn't know you need them, but once you do, you'll never go back. You will feel cleaner, cooler, fresher, and now you can do it for 20% off plus free shipping. Just use code BDE20OFF at manscaped.com. Do it right now. Every time the Orioles hit a homer, they pull out what fans are calling a dong bong. Basically, a beer bong for water. For a single, the players pretend to turn on a faucet. For a double, the dugout spits water out of their mouths for a sprinkler. A few teams have had dugout celebrations like this for the past few years, but in 2023, it's gone to another level. The Angels have a Kabuto, a samurai helmet that Shohei Otani bought. They are almost exact replicas of helmets real samurais used to wear, are made by 35 craftsmen in Japan, take five months to make, and cost around $2,500. The Pirates have a sword that was given to them by fans who go to almost every game dressed like pirates. The Mariners have a trident because they're the Mariners. The Nationals have a colonial wig because they're the Nationals. The Twins have a fishing outfit because they're in a state with a lot of lakes. And the Reds have a Viking helmet because one player thought another player looked like a Viking, but now they all wear it. The Braves even had an oversized hat. 
which started when a fan randomly threw one to AJ Minter. When Orlando Arcia hit a homer, it was placed on his head, and starting from that point, every player who hit a home run was seen wearing the hat, until one day, it suddenly stopped. Turns out, the hat was banned because New Era has an exclusive deal with MLB that requires all on-field hats to be made by New Era. They complained, and even though all these other hats aren't New Era, the Braves hat was banned. So now the Braves have no home run celebration, which is sad because even the White Sox have a home run celebration. They have been one of the most disappointing teams in the league. Winning their division in 2021, they were deemed one of baseball's next big things, went into 2022 as heavy division favorites, and completely fell apart. Their manager was caught falling asleep in the dugout. In a different game, a friend from the crowd yelled at him to put Adam Engel in as a pinch runner. Tony. From the video, it looks like he forgot to do it, then did it because the fan told him to. The team was terrible, but their manager left, and going into this year, they still had high expectations. They've been even worse. They went from having a 30% chance to make the playoffs to having a 4% chance in a month. They lost 10 games in a row, and in the middle of this, their star player, Luis Robert, hit this ball should have been safe by a mile, but was out because he didn't run hard. He said he was tired and injured from running the day before, forgot what his bench coach's name was, and got benched. Ozzie Guillen even said he would strip a piece of clothing for every consecutive win the White Sox had. So if they keep winning, you'll take off a piece of your clothing? Yes. I can strip, <laughs> you got some $1 bill? I can strip for oh, you no, for $1 They bill. lost the next day. And in one of the worst losses ever, they had the bases loaded in the 10th in a tie game. Hansel Alberto got hit by a pitch. This should have won them the game, but he swung at the pitch that hit him. He ended up getting out and the White Sox ended up losing. But even this isn't as bad as the Cardinals. They came into the year as heavy favorites to win the division, but in the first week of the season, Tyler O'Neill was thrown out at home. Replay shows he may not have hustled. Their manager called him out in public directly to the media. Tyler O'Neill heard this and responded by saying he works his ass off and was decharacterized by his manager. He was also benched. And this might have made things even worse. In fact, their pitchers are so bad, they had to bench their catcher. To many, that makes zero sense. But according to a rumor, Cardinals pitchers don't like the way Wilson Contreras calls games. The Cardinals say that he will no longer be the catcher, basically because he's not calling the pitches they want. So a player, the Cardinals paid $87 million this offseason to be their catcher for five more years? A few months later, is no longer good enough to be the catcher. Her manager may be close to getting fired, and the Cardinals, as of now, are in last place. But Wilson Contreras has had a great season offensively, and actually, after this beef, may have ended this legend's career. In 2020, the Diamondbacks signed Madison Bumgarner to a five-year, $85 million contract, making him a franchise player for a rebuilding team. He's been terrible. The Diamondbacks, on the other hand, have gone from a last place team to being a young, exciting team in the playoff picture. Bumgarner, who was supposed to be their ace, went into the fourth game of the season with a 7.9 ERA, getting even worse after giving up three runs in the first three innings. He then faced Wilson Contreras, who fouled this pitch off and got pissed he didn't hit it far. Bumgarner got pissed that Contreras got pissed and told him, quote, shut the f up, pussy. And Contreras responded by telling him to. Yeah. He ended up walking and flipping his bat as high as he could, then went on to hit a double off Bumgarner, who went on to give up four more runs and left the game with an ERA over 10. And the very next day, even though the Diamondbacks have to pay him 36 million more dollars, they cut him from the roster, seemingly ending what was an amazing career. 
Ironically, the day Bumgarner was cut was the same day Fernando Tatis Jr. returned. These players could not be any more different. Tatis became baseball's most beloved star for dancing, flipping his bat, and hitting at an historic pace. Then became one of baseball's most hated players when he tested positive for steroids. This season, Tatis has returned after an 80-game suspension, and it is clear there is a massive target on his back. During his rehab assignment in the minors, he hit an insane seven homers in eight games. These homers were posted on social media, where a pitcher who gave up one of these homers responded by calling Tatis a cheater, prompting Tatis' mom to call out the pitcher, saying that he just wanted a minute of fame. Since coming to the majors, the hates got even worse. Fans have been doing the he's on steroids chant at several different ballparks. In Chicago, these chants were so loud, Tatis literally started dancing in the outfield while they chanted it. But Tatis seems to be just as good without steroids. After briefly struggling, he went to Mexico, where the Padres played the Giants. Tatis went off, and so did everybody else. According to Logan Webb, going to Mexico was a nightmare because 75% of the Giants roster, quote, got the This didn't affect the batters because the game was played 7,349 feet above sea level. That is 2,000 feet higher than Coors Field with fences that are significantly shorter, meaning that this was one of the easiest games to hit a home run in Major League history. These two balls were hit at the same launch angle and nearly identical exit velocities, but the one that was hit in Mexico went over 100 feet further. 10 different players hit a home run in this game. There were 11 in total. Both teams had two back-to-back -back homers each, and these homers combined for over 4,858 feet in distance, the third most ever recorded. The Giants got swept in what Jock Peterson says, quote, was the hardest trip he's ever done in the big leagues, and one can only hope that their shits go away soon.